Before people develop type 2 diabetes, they almost always have pre-diabetes. Janet Howard Ducey, a certified diabetes educator at Redlands Community Hospital, tells us how research shows that if you take action to manage your blood glucose when you have pre-diabetes, you can delay or prevent type 2 diabetes from ever developing. Right now in the country, there's 54 million people with prediabetes. Many people used to refer to it as borderline, or as physicians will tell you, I'm watching your glucose. What that means is when you go in and have a fasting glucose test, you've gone the night before without any food, go in and have a lab work done. If your lab results come back between 100 and 125, you have the diagnosis of prediabetes. You do not have good glucose tolerance. You've developed a form of insulin resistance. If your doctor says, I'm concerned about you, you're prediabetic. The diabetic uh, program prevention program found that if you lose five to 10% of your body weight, now that sounds like a lot, but technically it really isn't. If you're 200 pounds and you lose 5%, that's 10 pounds. That in addition to 30 minutes of sustained elevated heart rate. Now that's different from everyday working. We are talking keeping your heart rate at an elevated level for 30 minutes. You have a 58% chance of not developing diabetes. Those are outstanding odds. In addition, let's raise your good cholesterol, that HDL, high density lipids. That also is going to enhance your chances of not developing diabetes. We asked Nurse Ducey, what diet modifications should someone with prediabetes make? I'm of the philosophy of, I don't encourage you to avoid anything. What I do encourage is limit your portions, make the best choice and have predictability so that your body appreciates the energy that is coming in to match the energy that is going out. Here's two simple things that we, that we share with our patients, whether you're pre-diabetic or diabetic. We always carry our measuring cup with us. Our thumb, the first digit, that's one teaspoon. So if you're out somewhere having a teaspoon of margarine, if you're gonna have sour cream with your baked potato, the length of your thumb is one tablespoon. But let's think about that baked potato. This is the piece of fruit or the baked potato that you're having, the size of your personal fist. A half a cup portion is the inside of your hand. A piece of meat that you're having, look at your palm. That's what the pork chop, your steak, broiled chicken, and about the height of a deck of cards. So you always carry your measuring cup with your hand. And the other issue, please go out to eat. We encourage you going out to eat. But before they bring your plate, tell them, would you pack half of it? Have it for your meal tomorrow. They serve you a wonderful plate of food, and you get to eat it all, but it's just half. Instantly, you figured out your portion controls.